today we're going to go through some of the fundamentals of firefighting pumps. We're going to do that through a little bit of theory on the whiteboard, and then we're going to go outside and put all that into practice using our light tanker and HSR. To start with, let's um, have a look at identifying all of the components of our pump system and how they all work in the grander scheme of what we're trying to achieve. So let's start off down the bottom here with our tank fill. So this is just a normal ball valve and it will supply water direct into the tank. The next one here is our tank supplier. That's just a tank of water which we keep on the truck and that will range from 500 litres on our light tanker all the way up to 3,000 litres on our HSRs. When we move down the plumb, we're going to reach our first valve. This is our tank to pump valve. That's called that because it controls the water between our tank and our pump. Moving down along the plumbing here, we'll come to our collectors. Now once again, these are a normal ball valve or on our bigger suction collectors. This will be our 100 mil stort spitting, which is an uncontrolled inlet. Moving down the plumbing again, we'll end up at our pump. Now in the fire service, we use a centrifugal pump. The way this works is the water comes in through the eye of the pump, which is in the centre here, and it gets it travels through the veins of the centrifuge, hits the outer casing of the pump, goes through this thing here, which we call the volute, and then out the outlet. And this takes it from a static supplier from our tank into an energised supplier. So moving down the plumbing again, we'll end up at our deliveries. So this is where we connect our hoses up to, and we also need to remember on um, LTs and HSRs, we've got all those hose reels on there, as well as the other stores outlets on our light tankers, and uh, on our HSRs we've got those uh, lines which are up on the crew deck. So we also have a couple of pressure gauges to look at. On the inlet side of the pump we have the compound pressure gauge. So this will tell you what the pressure is reading on the inlet side of the pump. Well, we notice it has a negative and a positive, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. The next gauge we have is our normal pressure gauge. So this is telling us the pressure on the outlet side of the pump. And this is what we use to um, read our pressure uh, that we're delivering out to all of our deliveries, so it's our hoses, monitors, all that sort of stuff. Now our operating pressure will be determined by what we're trying to achieve downstream. So now we've identified everything, let's move into uh, putting all that into practice and uh, have a look at what the hours need to be like in the flow. So we'll start off by using our tank supply. So this will be how we're operating on our initial arrival to a fire, or if we're nowhere near a water source, so perhaps out at a bushfire. So our water starts its journey at our tank, and it moves first to this valve here, which we're calling our tank to pump valve. So he wants to be in the open position. From here, our water is going to move along the plumbing until it gets to our pump. Now, remembering our pump is what gives it our energy through the centrifuge spinning in the middle of the pump casing. From here, our water is going to travel down our plumbing and to whatever delivery we want to go to. So these will end up in the open position delivering water out to our fire, or maybe we're filling up another truck, or a collar dam, something like that. We now want to connect up a water supply to our truck, because our tank will eventually run out of water. So we're going to do this with an energised water supply. So this will be water coming in through one of our collectors. So we now want these to be open. Now because our tank to pump valve is also open, 
if we have enough supply coming in, our water will go to our pump. It will also go into our tank. So this will fill up our tank at the same time as supplying water out to all of our deliveries. Now this will only be achieved if the volume of water coming in is greater than the volume of water going out. So at this stage, our compound gauge will still be reading zero. So once our tank is full, we want to close our tank to pump valve. This will prevent any water from going into our tank, but it will send all of our supply into our pump. Now because this is an energised supply, our compound pressure gauge will move up by the amount that our water is being supplied at. So for the purposes of simplicity today, let's say we've got an um, hydro pressure of 5 bar. That's coming into our collector, going into the pump, so now our compound gauge will be reading 5 bar. Our pressure gauge, or our outlet pressure, will now also increase by that 5 bar, as well as whatever we have had initially sat, set at. So we're going to go from 7 bar to 12 bar as soon as we close this tank to pump out. So as competent pump, pump operators, we need to be prepared for this and get set up prior to um, making that change. So we can do that through a various different means. We can wind down our pump pressure prior to closing this valve. So if we want our delivery pressure to still be at, five, at, at seven bar, we know we have five bar coming in, so we just need to add an additional two bar to return it back to seven. So on our HSRs, that'll mean basically winding it back to an idle or just above idle. If our inlet pressure is, or our collector pressure, is more than five bar, let's say we're near the plant and we're actually receiving ten bar. Our truck being on an idle will still be producing somewhere around that twelve bar. Now to overcome that, you can do a various different things. Uh, collect the line, maybe we can just close our ball valve ever so slightly to reduce the amount of pressure and flow coming in. Um, that creates its own little issues down here uh, with ball valves being slightly closed. Um, so another method to overcome that could be having more deliveries open or looking at a different supply. So now we've looked at a supply from a hydrant, we're going to look at a static supply. So this could be a turkey's nest or a portable collar dam. So what we are going to be doing now is putting a suction hose onto one of our um, collectors which have got the 100mm storts adapters on it, on our HSRs, or on our light tanker it will be that small suction hose which goes onto the camlock fitting on the driver's side of the truck. So our pathway for our water, we want it to be going from the collector into the pump. So this means our tank to pump valve wants to be in the closed position. And we do that because we're not, we're not getting water from our tank, we actually want to fill it. And with this valve being open and this empty, all we're going to do is put air into the system. So we want this valve to be closed. From here, our water is going to go in through our pump, come out here, and what we're going to do is connect a hose from one of our deliveries 
into our tank fuel. So this means water will go from a delivery back into the tank and this will fill our tank full of water. We're going to have a look at some of the physics behind operating from a static water supply. Now this can be a turkey's nest, a portable collar dam, a river or a lake, something to that effect. So with our centrifugal pump creating a low pressure on the inlet side and thus through our suction hose which is going into the body of water, this puts it below atmospheric pressure. Now because we live on planet Earth, there is constantly one bar's worth of atmosphere operating on the surface of the water. So this gives us 10 metres worth of theoretical lift. So this is the distance behind, between the level of our pump and the top of the body of the water. So in the real world we only have about 7 metres worth of practical lift and this is just due to our pump performance, friction loss through our suction hose and our seals not being 100% uh, sealed. So if we look at the context of the drawing here, we have 5 metres between the ground level and the surface of the body of water and then we have an additional 1 metre from the ground level to the height of our pump. So this will make our compound pressure gauge read at minus 0.6 bar. Our outlet pressure or the pressure of our deliveries will be determined by what we are trying to achieve downstream. So now we have our system set up and we're normally operating at 7 bar at the branch. We want to add in a couple of other calculations to get the appropriate pressure at the branch. So that'll be allowing for friction loss and head pressure. So we'll start with friction loss. So this is the amount of pressure that we lose due to friction through our hoses. So this can be measured at 0.5 bar per 30 metre length of 40 millimetre hose or 0.2 bar at a 30 metre length of 60 millimetre hose. So our standard operating is to go a length of 60 and a length of 40 to get to the branch. So if we're normally operating at 7 bar at the pump, we want to add 0.2 for our 60 and then add 0.5 for our 40. And we can round that up to adding an extra 1 bar. So this will mean our pump is now operating at 8 bar to get 7 bar at the branch. So now let's have a look at head pressure or pressure of head. So this can be measured at 0.1 bar per metre of elevation or going below us. So let's look at our first branch here, which is 10 metres above the elevation of the pump. So we want 7 bar at the branch. We've got to add another 1 bar for our 60-40 and we want to add another one bar for our 10 metres worth of elevation. Which means our pump, we want to have set at nine bar. So head pressure works the opposite when we are going below us. So for this situation here, we want seven bar at the branch. We need to add one bar for our 60-40 but then we're minusing one bar because our branch is below our pump. So we're still going to be 7 bar at the pump. Got a little bit of friction loss, so we're increasing. But then we also have that pressure of head negative, so we're minusing that, that extra one bar. So still 7 bar at the pump to get 7 bar at the pump. So once we have arrived on scene, 
and parked in an appropriate and safe location. First thing we need to be doing is engaging the PTO so it can put power to our pump. To do this, we have the gearbox in neutral. We place our foot on the clutch, flick the PTO switch. Now it might be different on your appliance, the exact location of that. You would have heard just then the PTO engage the pump. From here we want to be lifting off the clutch. At the same time we want to be looking at our um, taco to see if there's any changes. Now our PTO is engaged, we can go out to the pump. So for the sake of context, we'll show you what system we have set up here. And this is a really easy drill that ESOs can do while they're on their own or incorporate into ERT training. So we have a single 60 mil hose supply from a hydrant. Coming into the collector, we have a single 60 mil hose coming out of a delivery, which we've then plugged into a ground monitor here. That'll be flowing at about 1,000 litres per minute. And then to get a second delivery, to try and get our pump working a little bit harder, we're going to use our monitor, which is up on the top of the truck there. So we're gonna pay attention to how our gauges react here and go through all the operation of what valves we need to do in, uh, in like a sequential order when we turn up, run up our tank supply and then transition over to our hydrant supply. So when we first arrive on scene, we need to engage the PTO. This will deliver drive to the impeller on our pump and thus give our water some energy. From here, we need to turn on our tank to pump valve. This will allow water to go from our tank to our pump. Once we've achieved that, we can attach a hose onto a delivery. When we receive the call for water on, open up our delivery. While we're doing that, we're paying attention to our gauges. We're also having a look at our branch operator to see that they're still comfortable. Once we are happy, we can then determine our operating pressure. To adjust, go to your throttle and wind to the desired amount. and to time with what we were talking about earlier. We're just going to operate at 7 bar at the pump. Because we're on level ground and a length of 60, that's only really going to give us 0.2 bar of friction loss. So we're pretty close to 7 bar at the branch. So once we have identified our water source, and got a hose into our truck. We can now fill with water and then transition to our hydrant supply. Connect your hose on. Open the collector. Once this collector is open, you'll see our gauges remain normal. At this point, we have enough supply to fill our tank as well as supply water to our operation. <coughs> Once our tank is full, water will come out the bottom of the truck, which is symbolising that the tank is full. Now 
that our tank is full, we can go back to our pump, wind down our throttle, we're going to wind it down to about two bars, we are then going to close our tank to pump valve. Once our gauges have normalised, we'll see that we have 5 bar coming in, plus our pump pressure which is around 2 bar, so we have still got 7 bar going out. It's a little bit below it, so I'm just going to wind it up a touch. So now we still have adequate supply to our branch. <coughs> as well as adequate supply coming into the truck. So from here, we've decided that we needed more water to fight this fire. So we've now added the monitor on the crew deck of this truck. And as you can see, our outlet pressure has now dropped the tucks from before. So we're just gonna throttle up a little bit more than what we were. Now we're back up to 7 bar going out and we still have enough supply coming in because our compound gauge is still reading in the positive. So things to keep an eye on when you set up pumping like this from an energizer supply. Our hose coming in, if you just rest your toe on the hose and push down on it, if the hose is solid, then we know we have an adequate supply. So now I'll give an example of supply which is not adequate and how we can determine this. So with our toe still on the hose, we can see now that I can actually squash my foot into the hose. So that is one indicator that our supply is not meeting our demand. If we look at our pressure gauges, we can see our compound gauge has now gone to zero and our outlet pressure gauge is only reading four bar. So this is telling us that we're only receiving four bar at the branch and we're not receiving any positive pressure coming into the pump. This is because we have too much uh, demand, so too much water going out and not enough so not enough water coming in. So the way we can overcome this is either increase our supply, so get another hose coming in, or we can turn on this tank to pump valve again. The downside to that second one is that our tank supply is limited. We could also look at reducing the amount of water which we're putting out. So maybe have a reduced line or ask your branch operators to reduce the flow rate that they have on the tip. And this may mean a change in tactics for our firefighting. So we'll just show you quickly again the system that we have up, set up here. So we just have a length of 60 from a hydrant into the truck. We have a length of 60 to a ground monitor flying 1,000 litres per minute. And we also have the monitor on the crew deck of the truck, which is running just shy of 400 litres a minute. It's at 375. To put this into context for what we can achieve on the fire ground, we'll use the good old uh, can of screen house here as a guide. So you can see how much distance height-wise we're getting off the truck as well as the length we are achieving. So if we arrive to a screenhouse fire with minimal manning, a potential option could be to use the crew deck monitor from the truck, as well as an unmanned ground monitor down here. We can still achieve a fair bit with these limited resources. So to go to the next step of what we had set up before with a monitor off the truck and an unmanned monitor off the ground, what we've done now is we've put them both onto 
a jet stream. Aim them high and have them both pointing towards each other at roughly a 45 degree angle. What we've been able to achieve here, unfortunately this doesn't show up terribly well on camera today, is a really nice screen of water just down here. So we can use this for asset protection, for stopping the fire getting any bigger. It's a really good way of absorbing a lot of heat. 